Algebra 2, 2.7a, simplify absolute value expressions. In geometry, we say that the absolute value is a number's distance from zero on a number line. The absolute value of four is four. The absolute value of a negative four is four because it's four hops away from zero on a number line. The absolute value of zero is zero. It's zero hops away from zero. So the absolute value of a negative is its additive inverse. The opposite would be the additive inverse. So the absolute value of negative four is this positive four. See? Additive inverse. And the absolute value of a non-negative, well that just means it's positive, right? It's not negative, is that number. It's four. In algebra, the algebraic definition is the absolute value of x equals x if x is greater than or equal to the zero. And the absolute value of x is negative x if the x is less than a zero. So all this is saying for the definition is if x is equal to three, then the absolute value of x is three. And if x equals a negative three, then the absolute value of the negative x is the absolute value of negative three, which is three. Now if you're really confused, you can see this video's description for review videos for Algebra 1. I'm going to have a link to my inequalities and absolute value playlist in there, and that might help. Or you can keep watching because maybe it'll make some sense as we go along. So I got a few theorems for you, the properties of absolute value, and the first one says for all real numbers a and b, the absolute value of a times b is going to be the absolute value of a times the absolute value of b. Now, it means that the absolute value of a product the absolute value of this product is the product of these absolute values, of the two absolute values, okay? And if we've got the absolute value of A divided by B, then it's going to equal the absolute value of A divided by the absolute value of B, as long as B isn't a zero. So it's just saying that the quotient, the absolute value of a quotient is the quotient of the two absolute values. See? And the last one is, if the, ab the absolute value of a to the nth power is going to equal a to the nth power if that n is an even integer, a 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, as long as it's an even number. And the absolute value of an even power is that power. I'm going to explain this some more in a second. Now we can use this theorem to simplify expressions that contain absolute values. We need to simplify them, but we need to remember to leave as little as possible inside those absolute value signs. So to simplify absolute values, we're going to have to pull some of the values out, but some might have to stay in, okay? So take a look at this one. We've got the absolute value of 4x. Well, that's going to equal the absolute value of 4 times the absolute value of x, and this x is going to is alone. We don't know if it's a positive or negative. And it's got an exponent of 1, which is odd, so it's going to stay inside the absolute value bars. And this is why. Do you remember in second grade, when we did math or first grade, it would say 2 plus blank equals negative 5? And you would just fill in the blank? Well, think of an ex a variable as that blank line. Think of x as that blank line. It could be a positive or a negative. It's just a blank line. Don't look at this as a positive x here. Look at this as we're adding an unknown blank line, whatever is in that blank line. And x in this case is a negative 7, so it's 2 plus negative 7. So see how x, even though it doesn't have a negative sign, could be a negative? Does that make sense? All right. Now, look at this next one. We've got the absolute value of x squared. Well, that little 2 is an even number. For an exponent, so we can just remove the absolute value signs, and the absolute value of x squared is x squared. Now look at this one. We've got an even and an odd, and the absolute value of x squared y cubed is the absolute value of x squared times y squared times y. We can pull out these even exponents, but that one is going to be off by itself. It's going to be the absolute value of x squared times y, absolute value of y squared times the absolute value of y. So by simplifying, we were able to pull out these two, but this last y that made the third one, the third exponent, that has to be kept inside of the absolute value bars because it's got an exponent of one that's odd. Okay, so 
Even numbers make positives. Odd number exponents might make a negative. So think of this. If Let's say that we, we had uh, negative 2 to the second power. Negative 2 times negative 2 makes a positive 4. See? So anytime we have an even number here, it's going to make a positive number. See? So we can pull out. We can pull it out when we simplify. But if we have an odd exponent, like negative 2 to the third power, well, negative 2 times negative 2 times negative 2, that's what that means. That's a negative 8. So we need to pull out two to the sec negative 2 to the second power and leave another 2 in, you know, inside the, another x inside of the, uh, or y, inside the absolute value bars because we don't know if it's a negative or positive, all right? In this case, it was the y. All right, look at this one. We've got the absolute value of x squared divided by y. And what we do is we put them both into their own absolute value bars. x squared goes into sum and y goes into 1. See? And when we simplify it, because it's an even exponent, we can pull the absolute value signs off. But this one, because it has an exponent of 1, has to stay inside the absolute value bars. Because we don't know if it's a negative or positive. All right? Now we have the absolute value of negative 4x. We can open it up as the absolute value of negative 4 times the absolute value of x. The 4 can come out when we simplify it, but the x has to stay inside. It has an odd exponent of 1. When we see a variable alone like that, it means x to the first power, doesn't it? And 1 is an odd number. So it stays inside the absolute value signs. So look at this. I have a little chart here, and that might help me make sense out of all of this. So if the exponents are odd, like negative x to the first power. It's going to be the absolute value of x. And if it's even, well, then it's just going to be the x squared. See? Because it's an even number. Here's an odd one, negative x to the third power. We can pull out an x squared, but then the last one needs to stay inside the absolute value bars. See what happened? We pulled out an even when we simplified it. Okay. We can keep doing this. An even one is x to the fourth power. That can come out. An odd one is x to the fifth power. We can pull out x to the fourth, but then the last one, the fifth one, needs to stay inside. x to the sixth power is even, so that can come out. We don't need the absolute value bars. So do you see the pattern of what's happening? Whenever we have an even number, we can take off the absolute value bars. Whenever we have an odd one, when we're simplifying, then we pull out the even ones that we can, but we got to leave an odd one behind. See? All right. Our next video is 2.7b. We're going to talk about the distance between two points on a graph, on a number line, and we're going to talk about some absolute value. And you can go to the description of this video to see the link to the Algebra 2 playlist if you want to catch up a review or study for a test. And I'm going to add this video to that list right now. And there'll also be a link to the Algebra 1 playlist for inequalities and absolute value. So if you need to study up on that to review it, you can just click on the link and go right to it and make it easy for you. All right. I hope this helped you. I hope I explained it well enough and I hope you're having a great day. It's a gorgeous day here. I can't believe it's February in Illinois and it's going to be 60 degrees. I'll see you next video. Bye.